For a long time now, I've wanted to do a series of videos talking about the original Spyro the Dragon trilogy. These are some of my all-time favorite games, and had a huge influence on me as a kid. These are the games that taught me what I love about the medium. And it all starts right here, with the Spyro the Dragon PlayStation Underground demo disc. Yeah, not even the first game, just the demo for it. Demo discs were the best. Sure, demos are more accessible now than ever. You just go on the digital store, download the demo, and there you go, you can play it. But there's something special about having a demo on a physical disc. I don't know, I just miss the inconvenience of it all. I love this. They went all out on the sleeve, making it look like the front of a magazine, with articles inside giving you information about the gameplay and story. There's an article about angry sheep who are tired of Spyro because he keeps setting them on fire in the game. There's a report on Nasty Nork's attack on the Five Dragon Worlds, which is actually the opening of the game. Spyro is dating Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. Uh, I don't think that one was in the game. I could be- it's been a while since I've played- I never actually noticed this until recently, but the sheep in that article is Toasty. He's the first boss in the full game, a regular sheep on stilts in a big scarecrow costume. He was also in the commercials protesting the game. 90s video game commercials were something else. This is an official protest! I am an anti-Spyro activist! Genghis, come! What did you say? You're toast! Oh, I never filled out my Spyro the Dragon demo disc survey. I know I'm 24 years past the due date, but maybe they'll still accept it. It's funny looking back on this now, like, you couldn't just do an online survey and give feedback immediately, you had to fill this out by hand and mail it. And this is why I never did any surveys when I was a kid. And I love seeing reviews of decades old games from that time. This whole thing is just a neat little time capsule, it does a really good job of selling you on the personality of the game before you even play it. And these screenshots of Spyro flying amazed me, I had never seen flying in a video game at the time, what a wacky concept. But that's enough packaging talk, because they included a free disc with this piece of cardboard. Whoa! Why is he looking at me like that? Stop it. The disc has a trailer for the game, and if the packaging doesn't sell you on it, this trailer absolutely will. Spyro is flying around everywhere, there's so many amazing looking environments and characters. I would watch this trailer over and over as a kid, with my eyes glued to the screen. I couldn't wait to experience the full game. And this is partly why I love old demos, having this trailer preserved on a physical disc is awesome. But what's even cooler is that this trailer includes a free game on it. No way! The demo has two playable levels, and the hub level. Even now, it's fun playing through this disc just to see what the game was like before it was finished. When you rescue a dragon, there's a unique little cutscene where they give you advice, but some of them aren't finished yet, there's just some on-screen text. Two of the three areas don't even have their music yet, the hub just plays the title theme. I was really confused when I eventually played the full game and the music was different. See, I was pretty young when I first played this. It was my first experience with a demo. The first time I played it, I didn't see it as a small preview of a much bigger game. It was just a game. What's with this mysterious broken portal? There's gotta be a way to open it somehow. Look at this giant dragon statue. I wonder if there's a way inside. And the balloonist tells you, the other worlds are very exciting. I'll take you there in September. I didn't realize that September was when the full game would release, and thought I had to wait in real time just to play the demo in September. I don't think Baby Tad had ever been more disappointed. September finally came around. I put in the demo disc. I was so excited to see the exciting other worlds. I didn't. Even after realizing that this was just a preview disc, that didn't really stop me from replaying it over and over. I played those same three levels to death. I guess I should probably talk about why I actually liked Spyro so much. So basically, um, everything. To this day, Spyro is one of my favorite characters to control in a video game. Moving around feels great. He has a fire breath and a running charge, and both are used to defeat different enemies. The charge is also great for moving around faster. I have an attention span of about 4 seconds. If I can't get around a level quickly enough, I'm just gonna... Sorry, I lost my train of thought. Oh, right, gliding. It's amazing, I love it. Any video game that gives you the ability to glide or fly, I'm into it. Gliding gets even better in the next game too, but we'll get to that when we get to that game. 
Also for 1998, this game looks pretty incredible. The environments are all really interesting and I love the art direction. The skyboxes especially look so nice. Spyro the Dragon's skyboxes look prettier than real life, what is happening here? The Grand Canyon's pretty incredible, but have you ever seen Spyro jump through a portal and seamlessly fly into a new sky while all the gems you collected fly around him? You can just, you can close down the Earth sky, uh, we don't need that. I like this one better, we don't need the old one. I like the Spyro one. The loading screens in the original Spyro trilogy are my favorite in any video game. It doesn't even feel like a loading screen, Spyro's just flying through the portal to the next level. Sparks the Dragonfly is another example of the game's visuals being perfect. Instead of having a health bar, you just have a funny little guy who flies around you, and his color changes depending on how much health you have left. I should probably talk about the levels too. Stone Hill is the perfect first level for this series. You have these wide open fields and you can get used to using your charge and fire breath. The whole thing is surrounded by these tall walls covered in grass and you would assume that these are just the level's boundaries. But what makes Spyro so cool is that you can actually get up there. And there's tons of stuff to collect. Usually with this trilogy, if you can see a place, you can get there. Trying to figure out how is the best part. Running from the start of the level to the end of the level takes about 30 seconds, but if you're a cool guy, you want to go out and collect all the gems in the level. So you need to explore every corner of the map to find them all. There's this locked box that you need to find a key for, and I remember having so much trouble trying to find it. Behind the end of the level portal, there's this secret beach that you can drop onto, and the key is hidden in a cave on the secret beach. It's really satisfying finding this little tucked away area. The other level in the demo, Dark Hollow, is really good as well, though a bit more linear than Stone Hill, not that that's a bad thing. This dude in the tunnel gave me nightmares as a kid, I spent way too long trying to figure out how to get past him. If you don't move for long enough, the demo ends, and you get these screens telling you to go buy the game when it comes out. And again, they did such a good job of creating this sense of mystery around the full game, at least to little kid me. What all would this game have to offer? If only I had seen this screen before the incident with the balloon guy. I plan on eventually talking about all of the original Spyro games, but since my history History with the series began with this demo disc, I had to start at the beginning. And I can't wait to talk about the other games, because believe me, the other worlds are very exciting. I'll take you there in September. Don't watch this video in September, this is the demo, go, it's the full one, it's September, that's a different-